don't think I'm getting anywhere with this trip folks I don't think I am 375 metres and I'm still in the cloud and I'm still getting absolutely no sign of getting out the cloud either so yeah I think I'm just going to wrap the video up here and just confirm that this has been a miserable wild camp Well folks, how are we all doing? We're back out exploring once again and this time you join me in the Trossachs National Park and I'm going up a corbett that I've been up before called Ben Lady. it's 879 metres high and because I've already been up I'm not sure if I'm going to go for the summit today I'm nearly 500 metres up, 879 metres so I'm not too far away probably another hour of walking with this backpack on but well under an hour if you just had a day pack on and you were not filming and yeah I was unsure if I was even going to bother going out but I'm quite glad I've made the effort as always I'm um, still working on my fitness uh, for the summer months uh, with the longer hikes coming in um, so yeah this is quite a steep climb but it's on a path and later on I'm going to tell you why I've decided to pick this peak for this weekend's camp but yeah for now I'm going to get a, another layer on Unfortunately that's the rain starting to come, whether or not it goes off or if it's going to get heavier, I guess time will tell. Um, that's another reason why I'm not sure if I'm going to go up or not to the summit, just with this rain. And it's a wee bit inconsistent at the moment. Uh, we had snow a few days ago but that's all melted because of the rain. And yeah, I've picked a mountain with a good path for that reason. Um, so anyway, let's get this jacket on and let's get up to the camp spot, wherever that will be. <laughs> Alright, so after just over two hours of walking, that includes my filming time as well. I've reached the summit for the second time of Ben Lady. It's a bit wet on the trick point actually. I'll not lean against it as much there, just hold the side of it. But yeah, two hours to get up here, which is actually an hour quicker than my previous attempt. I think I remember Monty saying in his video it was three hours to get up here the last time. Um, so yeah, I've kind of just got my head down for this one and got up here in reasonable time. At the moment I've checked the rainfall radar, not too much rain is supposed to be coming um, I don't want any rain before getting the tent up for obvious reasons I got a wee bit of rain at about 600 metres uh, but the wind kind of dried me out a wee bit which is nice um, so I don't really want to get wet before getting the tent up Not sure if I'm going to pitch in the same bit I did the last time or maybe scout another area um, Me being me I'll probably look for some shelter uh, but the wind is only meant to get up to about 20 tonight, 20 miles per hour, uh, averaging about 10. But it was meant to be like that up LC and it never happened in the morning, so we'll just have to see. It's the same winter setup as my previous videos. Right, let's go and find somewhere uh, we'll get the tent up. Alright, so I'm going to drop 
um, about 50 or 60 metres from the summit. Um, I really wanted to come up and bag it again. <laughs> I can't help myself. I was so close and I thought, you know what, I'll go up and bag it, see what the phone signal's like, and it's pretty crap to be honest. Um, it's not much better than it is down here anyway. And there was a spot that caught my attention. Uh, so yeah, it's about 50 or 60 metres off the summit. Uh, there's this wee pole <laughs> next to the path that I'm looking out for. Uh, I said to myself, right, just remember that pole, guys, and uh, take a turn to the left. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and find this pole. I think it's actually, I'll show you the now. That hill there, I need to go over that, and then I think it's just after that hill. I need to drop another maybe 20 metres, and then it's just down there. I did investigate this bit just down here, but it was all boggy and mushy and just crap. So yeah, um, whew, I guess I'll catch you when I get to this spot. At least the wind has died down. It was a wee bit windy on the ascent up there. Um, I think the cloud line's about 700 metres, so if I camp down here as well, it'll not be much of a, a descent, but that could change overnight, I suppose. Alright folks, so there's the pole there and this is the camping spot for tonight and I don't really care anymore I've only got a couple of hours daylight so this is where I'm going I nearly walked past the pole after saying I was looking out for it Yeah, this is it, this isn't too bad I'll certainly get flat ground up here All these people that say ah, you can't get flat ground or oh, I'll not go camping unless the ground's flat <laughs> I will look and look because yeah, you never know. <laughs> this isn't too bad. Just hoping the pegging ground's okay. Uh, we'll go here because I think the rain's going to start. Alright, so we finally got the tent up, thankfully. So glad about that. And it's now time to get the backpack sorted out now and get all the sleeping stuff sorted as well. So, I'll go through my backpack. So for tonight's meal, I've got something I've never tried from Wayfarer Meal. Moroccan style bean stew. That's it there. Hopefully that looks okay on your screens. Um, looking forward to that. All day breakfast for tomorrow. I'm going to have it this time. Definitely. I'm not rushing off the hill like I did last weekend. Got my Rab jacket for later on. It's actually quite warm up here, it's got to be said. Uh, for this time of the year, considering the weather, the weather we've hit. It's actually quite warm for this time of the year, considering the weather that we've had this week. That's what I'm trying to say. Get your words out. Anyway, this is my pillow here. Uh, running those now. <laughs> this is my pillow here, quite small pack size. Use it all year round, like I said in Monty's video. Uh, my reactor uh, inner liner from Sea to Summit. Brilliant, made it making a huge difference. Uh, I can't believe it took me this long to get one. Got my Feminist Neoware X Firm. This is my stove next. Well, the lid. This is my Jetboil Zip stove. Inside there's like my lighters, my gas canister, stuff like that. So it keeps the pack size reasonably small and it keeps everything together. I'm really struggling with this nose. And then I've also got my sleeping bag, which is still the Decathlon Simmond sleeping bag, and the white one. Um, I think that's it. And as you'll see, to keep everything dry, I'll always put it inside a 70 litre dry bag. This is a 68 litre backpack. So, yeah, and basically what I do is I roll this up, compress it down and stick the tent on top. So the tent's also inside the backpack. I used to store my Southern Cross one on the outside of the backpack. Not the Southern Cross one, but basically what I used to do is I used to store my tents on the outside of the backpack until I nearly ripped one on barbed wire fencing. Um, so I don't do that anymore. Uh, and basically what I do is I just kind of roll this up and put it back in the backpack. It keeps everything together. Also got my electrics, such as my head torch and that. Food for tonight's in there. I've got cookies by the way. <laughs> Someone said, oh you didn't have cookies in your last trip. Yeah, got them now. 
and this is my sit mat, which I'm going to start using now. The nail on makes a huge difference that uh, when you're filming outside the tent, especially when the grass is damp or cold, a bit like tonight. And then on the outside, hopefully you can still see this, I've got my reflective mat, which is very light and a bit wet because it's been on the outside. <laughs> right, I'll get this all set up and I'll catch you later. I know a lot of people say that I don't get many people walking by my clips or people say they very rarely see people There's a dog and uh, someone walking up so I'm not alone <laughs> Well I think it's fair to say that I timed this one really well Ever since I've got the tent set up um, this rain has just been constant um, for about the last hour then I would say I've had the tent up now um, Obviously I got a wee bit of rain on the way up, but it was nothing compared to what I'm getting now So I'm quite happy about that um, Still not getting any views as you would expect given the weather um, But what I like about going camping in weather like this is the weather will change throughout the night So I'm just hoping that... just going to wipe the lens here I'm just hoping that uh, maybe tomorrow we might get another view of Ben Lady Because uh, it is an, an amazing place, uh, if you've not seen my previous video here I'll leave a wee link on the video right now and you can check it out later on but it is a stunning viewpoint Ben Lady Right, I'm going to get the tent door down now and uh, yeah, think about getting something to eat maybe I'm just hoping this rain goes off if there's a spell I'll wait but if it's just going to rain constantly then you know, I'll probably just get something to eat now if not then I'll just wait uh, wait until this rain goes off well that's our rain shower finally passed and we're coming up to sunset now um, So I'm not sure, I might go for a wander out the tent well, not, I mean I'm not going to get any views, I'm still going to be in the cloud but um, Yeah I'm not sure, <laughs> I'll need to decide but What I'm going to do actually is I'm going to have a bite to eat once it's dark I think And that just breaks up a little bit It's dark for about 7 now so it's not bad at all when the clocks go forward next weekend at the time of filming this anyway uh, the last weekend in March so I can't wait for that if I must say the clocks going forward and we're getting closer to summer conditions I would say another 7 or 8 weeks uh, you could still get snow as I've said many times you, on the higher grounds like Ben McDewey and Bray Reich and places like that you can see snow well into June so I mean, I got snow up Crooker Drain when I camped there at the end of May So, I feel like knowledge you can still get snow But what I want to ask is, what do you guys prefer? Do you prefer summer hiking or winter hiking? It's a strange one with me because I prefer summer hiking over winter hiking Because there's more, more, more time in the day to do things really, you can do bigger routes but I prefer winter camping over summer camping because of all the midges and stuff like that so yeah let me know do you prefer your winter hiking and camping or summer hiking and camping or you like me where you prefer hiking in the summer but camping in the winter or is it different do you prefer summer camping over winter camping I, I mean like, there's a lot there's a lot to cover really eh? but let me know in the comments if you if you want anyway uh, if you do this as well um, what you prefer, what's your favourite time of the year to do all this this hiking and camping because I've always said that January and December are months I really don't enjoy but once I get to about the middle of February and the daylight starts to get better yeah, between maybe February and March or February and April maybe say 
It's my favourite time of year to go camping, without a doubt. And then hiking between May and September. So here is one last look at the lack of views that we're getting for tonight before it's dark. Uh, we've got a wee break in the rain so I thought we'd come out, stretch the legs. I have a feeling it's going to be a long night in the tent. I think there's going to be more rain than what's forecast with this cloud being really low. Um, yeah, we'll see anyway. Hopefully the forecast is right. Because uh, once again I forgot my earplugs. <laughs> so heavy rain, trying to sleep in heavy rain. Some people can do it but I can't. I need a really quiet tent or earplugs to get through a night. So yes, what I'll do is I'll show you the views or lack of views, just to give you an idea of how poor the visibility is up here. It is worth mentioning, there is a good path up here, as you would have already seen. So that will help with navigation, but always take your GPS device, your mapping compass and stuff like that. I don't really want to go on a bit of a rant about that, but just keeps you right in case you do end up going off the path, like I've done for this camp, just to even get you back on the path. So yeah, anyway, yeah, I'm going to go back in the tent. And uh, I think that'll probably be me in the tent for the, the rest of the night now. So it's half past seven now and we're due another short burst of heavy rain in the next maybe 20 minutes maybe. We'll go 20 minutes anyway. So I'm going to quickly get a bite to eat and then yeah, that'll probably be it really. Looking forward to this meal, like I said I think. Um, never had it before. Uh, just seen it and I thought, you know what, uh, let's give this a try. So, just going to set the stove up now, uh, get water poured in the, the jet boil itself. Once again, I just took water from the house, um, drunk a bit and then filled up from the stream. Uh, so, I'll just put a wee bit in here. You don't need a lot of water to make a wayfarer meal, eh? Um, just a tiny wee drop. <coughs> Does the job. Right, let's do this. The weather has been alright the last hour, to be fair, which is good. A wee bit of heavy rain, which, eh, to be fair, is also quite good. I enjoy listening to the rain. Like I said, as long as the... Well, I think I said it. As long as the tent's up before the rain comes. There we go. Um, as long as the tent's up before the rain comes, I'm, I'm happy enough with a rainy camp. Right, let's do this. Not as much wind on this trip compared to the old seat, which is good. You can make the smell outside the tent. Uh, last time I had to hide the stove down the vestibule, which is always a shame when you have to hide in your tent when you're making your meals. I think we're getting somewhere with this now. Shouldn't take too long to boil up because there's not much water in there. Yeah, that's fine. Right, let's get the meal in. Looking forward to this. Just before I left for uh, this trip, I had the postman come with uh, more wafer meals. I can't help myself. I usually just order them online. I can't be bored going to go outdoors just to buy wafer meals. The lid doesn't want to sit. It's annoying. I never notice there's always something wrong with me whenever I make a wafer a meal. Tonight, the lid ain't shutting. That's the problem for tonight. Get in there. And stay in there. There we go. Problem solved. For now anyway, the way for me will come back up and smack the lid and it'll open. Got some iron brew as well. Why no? I just have them in these wee bottles because whenever I have a can I usually spill it, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah lovely. I love an iron brew. It's a shame, eh? Uh, Morrison's, my local Morrison's doesn't seem to sell wee bottles in any, any the other drink. Like, it's usually just Iron Brew they sell wee bottles in. 
Why did I? Why did I put the fork back in the bag? Oh, the light. Sorry, forgot to turn the head torch off. Oh, no, I apologise. Probably blinding you again. I'm going to turn the stove off and just leave that sitting in the, the hot water now. Oh, oh, what a miserable camp. Oh, it's still cloudy, I'm still in the cloud. It's to be like this all day tomorrow. So I can only apologise for the lack of views. Can't choose the weather when I go out camping, as I've said many of times. But, yeah, summer is coming very soon. And I'm starting to wonder if I should just camp all summer. Or should I still do what I done last year? Bag the Munros but film them. So I'm really enjoying my camping again, eh? But as I've said already, I struggle with camping in the summer. But if I can keep it going, I think that's what I might do this summer, just camp the Munros. Might get less Munros done, but... Uh, what I really want is just a cloud inversion in the morning. Uh, when I'm camping. I think it'll be special, eh? So I'm going to try and camp as much as I can this summer, I think. Um, and yeah, hopefully if I keep doing it, I'll get a good cloud inversion. Murray uh, uploaded a video, um, Northern Lights video this week as well. It looks spectacular. That's another thing I'd love to see is uh, the Northern Lights on a camping trip. Uh, I remember it very well, uh, the weekend that it happened, it was a couple of weeks ago, it was actually the day after my Orkney Free Hill trip, so it'll actually be coming up three weeks ago, and I was like, ah, oh, why could that not have been the night I was at camping, that would have been really special if I got the, the, the Northern Lights as well, uh, went out on a camping trip, uh, because Orkney Free Hill was pretty much perfect, you know, the, the stars, the, the fact there was no wind, um, the sunset and sunrise was okay, I suppose, as well. Um, but to get the Northern Lights, that would have really just, that would have just been perfect. That would have been better than a cloud inversion, probably. Um, you know, but I'd love to see it with my own eyes, eh? The Northern Lights, I think it would be awesome. Has anyone ever seen the Northern Lights on a camping or hiking trip, like, with their own eyes? Yeah, I think that'd be interesting, like, um, uh, I've got no phone service again, I'm trying to do things with the phone, it, it kind of comes and goes, uh, the phone service, which is a shame. Um, but, yeah, I'll fight with it later. <laughs> Alright, so that will do. Nice, it's been in there a good 10 minutes, so it should be hot enough. Yeah, that's fine. That's, that's more than fine, I'm happy with that. Right, let's see if I can get this pack open with no issues. And we'll see what's inside here. And it opened quite nicely. I've had worse attempts at opening a Wayfarer meal. Walking a free hill. Right, let's see inside, let's see what we've got, and then I'll show you now. This is what we've got inside. Looks really nice, smells really nice. But does it taste really nice? <laughs> I'll let you know in a minute. So we're coming up to 9 o'clock now, 9pm, and we're still getting the, the occasional rain shower coming through. Uh, they changed the forecast to heavy rain, uh, early hours tomorrow morning, so we'll see if that comes or not. Now as far as the Wayfair meal is, I had that about an hour and a half ago, and I really enjoyed it. Um, nothing better when you get a new meal, and you like it, eh? so it's one for the future that. Um, got some Moritons cookies again, had these at Crooken Reservoir. Uh, these are the dark chocolate triple chocolate cookies, so there's a wee bit more taste in them, 
uh, and they don't fall apart as easily as the other cookies did they're a wee bit thicker eh so that's quite good as well so yeah folks I'm going to wrap it up for the evening really enjoyed myself and I hope you've enjoyed the video I know the weather's not been great you've not seen much of the area so we'll just need to see if this weather clears tomorrow although it's not looking likely so yeah I'll see you all maybe throughout the night if this rain comes if not then yeah tomorrow morning I'll definitely see you then Well, good morning everyone, um, <laughs> still raining, as I said there was a very high chance it could rain this morning uh, with the clouds being low pretty much this whole trip, um, it wasn't forecast to be like this, it was just to be misty and poor visibility but um, I just had this feeling it was going to rain this morning eh? Now I'm in no rush to, um, to pack for obvious reasons um, I did say this yesterday that you know I'm not going to rush off the holiday like I did uh, last week at LC um, particularly given the, the forecast the fact that it could potentially have rained this morning as well um, I'll probably give it to about 9 I think the earliest I'll pack 8 and yeah, we'll just see, see what it's like then but it's uh, 6 o'clock in the morning at the moment and it's daylight now, which is great. So as I've already shown you this morning, there's the views. Just going to keep the camera inside the tent so the lens doesn't get wet. <laughs> wow. The lens still gets wet, isn't it? You can actually see a wee bit of rain on the lens there. So that's me started packing away, I'll keep this reflective mat out just to keep me off the, da the damp ground sheet um, That's the last thing I always pack inside the tent um, And that's the reason why I pack that outside the backpack as well Since it's the last thing I pack um, As I said I think yesterday, um, I always make sure the tent is inside the backpack The vestibule's pretty bare as well, we've got um, an ice axe, a bottle of water and my boots there so, um, I'll deal with that in a minute. The view outside is still probably non-existent. Um, it's just really wet outside. <laughs> um, I think it's about 8 o'clock now, I've not even left the tent yet. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure, I'm just hoping this rain kind of... I hope we get a spell of good weather just for getting the tent down. And if it comes back down again, then at least I'm walking off the, the mountainside. Now I'm going to do my location rating, as always, uh, for each camp uh, This is where it gets quite tricky because I've not had a single view from this camp spot uh, and I've not had a view from about 600 metres onwards so I'm at 850 metres so the last like 200-250 metres down the way I've been in the clouds so 
Uh, the good thing is I've been up here before, so I can kind of base the score off that. I'm happily going to give it an 8 out of 10. Uh, if I'm going by the actual ground that I'm camping at, it's very flat, the, the pegging ground's good, and there's plenty of spots here for more than one tent as well, so... Um, I'm about 850 metres, only about 30 metres short of the, the summit. So, you are quite close to the summit as well, so if it's like a nice morning, and you want to walk up to the summit and get some photos, it's only going to take you like two or three minutes to do that. So, yeah, I won't hesitate coming back here considering this mountain is less than an hour from my house. Um, and on a clear day, I can get a really good view of this mountain from the house. So, 40 miles away on the road is uh, how far I've got to travel to get here. And the viewpoint is really, really good on a clear day up here. It's just unfortunate the weather's not played ball for this trip, but a wee rainy camp sometimes does make uh, for some really enjoyable footage, once you're off the hill anyway. <laughs> At the time it can be quite tricky to film, but yeah, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10, which does put it in the very good category. Alright, so I'm just about ready to go outside and take this tent down and see what we've got, but yeah, I've still not got much hope. <laughs> it's quite bright though, it is quite bright out there. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll see how long it takes before we're out, we're out this cloud on the descent down. But yeah, I'll catch you outside, we'll see what the views are like. Got the big waterproof gloves on, let's see what we've got. Oh, let's go. Jesus, I'm trying to get up. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, yes. That's not the best visibility in the world, is it? So yes, yeah, so there's the tent. This is the ground here. Let's go for a wee wander to the path. Try and keep this lens covered a little bit here from the rain. And uh, yeah, one of the main reasons why I picked this mountain or hill um, is because of this path. If I was on a, a mountain with no path, it would be very boggy and very difficult to navigate, but all I need to do is just stick on this path. And this takes you right up to the summit, and it's quite easy to find right enough, it takes just over there. Plenty of puddles on the ground. As I said in Monty's video, that was one of my main concerns with this tent over here, is how would it handle a puddle, because the bathtub's quite small, it doesn't really go high up. Uh, and whenever I put items inside the pocket, it actually weighs the bathtub floor down, unfortunately. So yes, um, the lens is already soaked. Um, not going to mess around too much with the filming. Um, after what happened at Dramocta, where I pretty much destroyed my microphones <laughs> uh, with uh, water damage. I don't want to repeat that, so... We'll get this tent down and then I'll probably just wrap the video up at the woodland bit, which you've seen at the start of the video. Um, nice shelter bit down there. But yeah, the summit of the hill is just over there in that wee bit, but you can't even see. You can maybe just about make it out. I can, but I don't know if you will with the, the, the lens being all blurry now, but the summit is literally just up there. Eh? 50, is it 30 metres away, I said? So yeah, not far at all. Alright folks, so that's me all packed away, that's where I was camped, nice flat bit of grass there. But yeah, I pitched here because this rock was offering shelter from the initial wind uh, from yesterday, however it's changed direction and I'm still getting a bit of shelter from this slope here, but yeah, I'm going to be walking into a headwind basically. Um, so yeah, what I'll do is I'll get this backpack on, we'll get lowered down, hopefully we'll get out of this cloud, the rain will get a wee bit lighter as well. and. Yeah, that'll be it. We'll wrap the video up uh, with some views, hopefully. <laughs> right, I'll catch you down there. Well, folks, I'm not getting anywhere. We're getting lower and lower down this mountain, and the clouds are just not going anywhere. <laughs> um, oh, that's a shame, Mike. Um, I've heard the clouds are pretty much all the way down to the trees, which, like I said, you would have seen at the start of the video. So, <laughs> no views at all on this trip which is a shame, so yeah, I'll get you down there, 
Oh, this is disappointing. So this is where this path has made a huge difference to the walk. If this wasn't a path, this would be a boggy mess right now. And it would be very difficult to first of all navigate, but also yeah, just to stay on your feet without falling. But yeah, this path yeah, it just takes you all the way down to the car park. So as long as you stay on it, yeah, you should be okay. Don't think I'm getting anywhere with this trip, folks. I don't think I am. 375 metres and I'm still in the cloud and I'm still getting absolutely no sign of getting out the cloud either. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to wrap the video up here and just confirm that this has been a miserable wild camp. <laughs> but an enjoyable one still. Uh, always good getting out camping. I nearly talked myself out of going uh, on this trip. Uh, I packed my backpack about 11 a.m. and was on the road for just after 12. So yeah, I'm really glad that I made the effort to manage to get out. So just gotta get through this woodland bit, a couple of hundred meters away from the car. I'm hoping that I will eventually get out the cloud. This is a lovely area, it really really is. It's just a shame about the weather. But sometimes a wee rainy camp can be quite fun. I don't always like doing it, but yeah, it can be fun sometimes. So anyway folks, I hope you've enjoyed this video while the rain comes down. It's <laughs> another reason why I left, the rain was to get heavier on higher ground and it is quite heavy down here. So yeah, I do hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have, give me a thumbs up. Possibly subscribe to my little channel. Yeah, until my next trip, take care. Woo, let's go. Come on then tripod, come on! No, no, I'll come and get you.